The Rock has demons to fight while training. In fact, there are two wolves inside of him. Me, I only got one. Let's see whether his training is any good from a sports science perspective. First of all, the reason I was smiling while watching that is because I forgot that The Rock actually raps, and I've listened to that the, uh... It's about drive, it's about power. We stay hungry, we devour. Etc. By the way, never ask for wolf coaching rap, it's not coming. Meet how Millionaire was the biggest mistake in YouTube fitness history. Anyways, what I'll say about the actual sports science here for a second is I think the warm-up is overkill. If he's using all of these different exercises to warm up, or as part of his rehab protocol for an injury, Fair enough. With that being said, with actually warming up, aka elevating your body temperature, most of the time, just doing a few sets of the actual exercise you're doing, so a specific warm up on the exercise you're doing, is going to be sufficient. And certainly there's no evidence for any of the exercises he's doing here before the session preventing injury. I also briefly saw him do a quick passive stretch, stretching out his chest and some other muscle group. Doing that for too long before a session can actually impair force production, so you don't want to be overdoing the stretching before a session. And if nothing else, compared to a dynamic warm-up where you're actually moving around, stretching doesn't make you warmer. And so it fails at making you warmer while potentially reducing your force production if you overdo it. And finally, if you just want to get more flexible, lifting weights actually does that to a similar extent, at least in certain ranges of motion, as stretching does. So unless it's something specific you're trying to get more flexible at, Stretching before a session probably isn't necessary. <laughs> to be clear, I'm not sure what the session is supposed to be, but it looks like he started off some underhand pull downs. And his technique was. Okay, I would like to see more eccentric control because it looked like a half a second eccentric maybe or a second eccentric and the research on tempo we have does suggest that you want like hopefully at least a two second eccentric or something like that. Additionally, he wasn't getting his elbows fully locked out at the top and getting a full stretch on his biceps and his lats and so I'd like to see a bit more of an emphasis on length and position. Otherwise, so far so good. Incline dumbbell press as a second exercise, totally fine. The incline press may actually be a slightly better chest exercise overall compared to the flat bench press. We actually have a study comparing hypertrophy from the two on screen now. So big fan of the incline dumbbell press. It looks like this is an upper body session, which I think is good as well. It's good that he's not using a body part split or routine, which I was fearing he might, but that's really solid. That way, if you're doing an upper lower split, in no likelihood, if you train four days or more a week, you're getting an effective frequency in. You're training each muscle group at least twice a week, which for hypertrophy is a big thumbs up. There's a whole video on frequency up here somewhere. As far as technique goes, yet again, I'd like to see a little bit more ease set control, and I'd like to see him get a full stretch. It looks like he's doing constant tension reps, which I have a whole video on somewhere here, but by missing out on that full stretch on every rep, I do think he's cutting short on how much muscle growth he could be getting. This edit is a mess. I have no idea where to start. He just did like machine rows, dips, cable flies, and push-ups, I think. Basically on all exercises, the common trend of, hey, 
slightly more eccentric control, uh, better stretch potentially, both of those do seem to apply. From what I can tell as well, I mean, just how much he's sweating and maybe it's just the editing, but it looks like he's taking pretty short rest times. And generally you do want at least two minutes between sets of a given exercise. Based on his work ethic, his general predisposition and the way this is laid out, my suspicion is he may not be resting for long enough to maximize muscle growth on each set. Okay, I have no idea what this session is now, because he did like push downs, uh, overhead extensions with the dumbbell, but then he did bench dips, and now he's doing bent over single arm dumbbell rows, but underhand. It's a mess. He's like 10 exercises at this point, and it's halfway through the video, so I'm scared. You almost certainly don't need to do three tricep exercises after already having done an incline dumbbell press and a dip in your session. Like that's five exercises that somewhat target the triceps in one session and that's overkill like your triceps get a good stimulus from maybe two exercises already if you do an overhead extension and some sort of compound pressing exercise you hit your medial lateral and long head pretty effectively now yes the dumbbell bench press or any bench press variation isn't ideal for tricep hypertrophy but just one isolation exercise and the bench press variation covers your triceps pretty well there's no need for five exercises Um, I forgot Tech 9 was even a rapper for a second there, but he just brought it back. If you've noticed, I'm not really commenting on the exercise technique. It's because every exercise is basically the same flaws. Not enough center control, not really a focus on length and position. Uh, on some exercises, a good deal of cheating as well, like the, the row there. And to be honest, none of the sets or reps I've seen are taken anywhere close to failure, which happens more often than not when you're taking really short rest times as well but equally like some routines tend to have you do i think with so much volume as he's doing here something has to give and usually it's approximated to failure so you kind of want to find a good balance of both and now he's doing lying down back extensions essentially training his lower back muscles i'm assuming it's some sort of prehab rehab work i'm not sure what the goal is here but hey ho He breathed in. A bit of a mess of a session, to be honest with you. Just a sheer number of exercises. The technique was meh. Could use more center control, could use more of a focus on length and position. Importantly, it looks like none of the sets were taken that close to failure. There was a lot of redundancy in the program design in terms of like, there are like five tricep exercises. So yeah, not great. The technique could use some work. The program design could use some work. But it's not terrible either, so I'll give it like a four. Moving on to the next video. In this video, we're getting presumably The Rock, aka Dwayne Johnson's personal trainer, telling us the insights behind his training program. If the previous video is anything to go by, I don't think I'm in for a treat here. But let's see. So today, going into this shoot, DJ is gonna be the leanest he's ever been and the most muscular he's ever been. He's really in the best shape of his life.
Hi, I'm Dave Rienzi. I'm DJ's strength and conditioning coach, and we've been working together for seven years. DJ's goal going into this shoot was really to bring his best ever look. The really important thing we've been trying to focus in on is really dialing in his conditioning so that he's as defined as possible, but also his muscles are as round and full as possible. His current training plan is really all about. I'm interested in the fact that he used the word conditioning to refer to leanness, which is kind of bodybuilding lingo. It makes no sense, by the way, why we call it conditioning. Why use that word when other industries and domains already use it for cardiovascular abilities, essentially? I have no idea. But it's interesting to me that he used the word in that way because it's not something a strength and conditioning professional would usually refer to in that sense. Also interesting to note that he was aiming for the raw kid to be in his best shape. I'm not sure if that's true. I've seen him in great shape multiple times. He didn't look particularly leaner or bigger than usual in that photo shoot. He looked great though. Dude's fucking stacked. You hear me? So far so good, I guess. Mind muscle connection, time under tension. It's really a lot of fine tuning. So really, he just said a couple of buzzwords there. He said, it's all about mind muscle connection and time and retention. As long as you have some time and retention in your set, and you're doing somewhere between five and like 50 reps per set, you shouldn't be focusing on time and retention. In fact, if you focus too much on it, oftentimes you get so out of breath that your set isn't being ended because of your local muscles ability to produce force, but rather because you're just so out of breath and burning that you want to end the set. And so an excessive focus on time and retention usually tells me one of two things. One, you're not sufficiently familiar with the evidence to know that time and retention focusing isn't the best thing ever. And or two, you're likely going to be ending your sets because you're tired rather than because your muscles are at the point of failure. And that's kind of evident in The Rock's training, at least from the montages. I didn't see a single rep that was taken close to failure. And with regards to my muscle connection, because there's essentially no evidence on focusing on my muscle connection being a good thing for hypertrophy, I have a whole video on that there, there's just one study looking at that and it's not even convincing. If someone tells me mind-muscle connection is a big focus of their program, it just tells me that's a buzzword they particularly like and that they're probably not really looking at the evidence when it comes to designing their training. With all the injuries DJ's had over the years, the warm-up is crucial. Make sure his joints are warmed up. We're not aggravating any of those old injuries. I'm gonna say a couple things. One, warming up a little bit will go a long way if there's any rule of it to prevent injury, right? You don't need to overdo it. And two, specifically when it comes to him already having pains in place, if there are strategies that allow him to train with less pain or manage his pain, I'm all for it. Ultimately, if you already have an injury, whatever you need to do to get through that session is all good. But that is ultimately very individual. So I do agree with that. The unilateral leg press. It's so unique because it allows you to isolate each leg individually while doing both legs at the same time. The tricky thing about this exercise is that it really shows you the disparity in leg strength. The unilateral leg press is a totally fine exercise. The way he's doing it here, Dwayne is getting a ton of gluten adductor stimulus. He's essentially getting a full stretch on the gluten adductor but the quads aren't really being targeted all that well. He could be getting a lot deeper in terms of his quads and get a much better stretch. So if he wanted to make it a better overall exercise, he could put his feet quite a bit further down on the platform, get a lot deeper, get a much better stretch on the quads, and likely see more hypertrophy. But if his focus here is glutes and outers, totally fine. The safety bar squats are very unique. They really tax the legs and the core. Your glutes, quads, hamstrings, the whole entire body is really challenged by this movement. As we like to say in bodybuilding, the back wins the show. If your personal trainer uses words like the core or claims that squats are training your hamstrings, that's not a good look. We have studies actually measuring muscle growth of the hamstrings from the squat, showing essentially no growth. And saying a movement really targets the core, that's usually a marketing point that is used by general population personal trainers to appeal to general population clients, but those have essentially no evidence behind them. Sure, in this case, you can claim that the lower back muscles are being trained because they're keeping your spine extended and that maybe some diaphragmatic muscles are being trained as well as part of breathing and bracing. But the rectus abdominis, for example, the ab muscle that most general population people actually associate with the core, those muscles are likely not being trained very effectively. And that's because if the abs were to get involved, they would crunch down the spine and actually make you bend over or collapse during the squat. Single arm dumbbell row, classic back exercise, really isolating obviously one side at a time, and it's a great mass builder for the back and the lats. So the exercises that I put together for this shoot, 
They're all challenging in their own way. The way The Rock is doing the single arm dumbbell row here, he's not really getting a stretch in anything. If you wanted to get a deeper stretch on his upper back muscles, bending over a little bit more and letting his shoulder blades come all the way forward and protract all the way forward would lengthen those a lot more and just grow them a lot more. Likewise, he's pausing in the shortened position, which just means more time and effort spent in that shortened peak squeeze position. Based on the evidence on training in the stretch position being better for hypertrophy than training in that peak squeeze position, that is also the opposite of what you want. So yeah, uh, I don't think the single arm dumbbell row is a terrible exercise, but I think the way it's being performed here, not ideal. DJ's gonna give them all 100% effort. You never know. He's really gonna bring it today and we may see some things that we haven't seen before. Well, I sure saw some stuff I hadn't seen before today. This was a bland react. I wasn't very impressed by any of it, to be honest. The Rock trains hard, but not hard in a productive way, if that makes sense. So I can tell that his rest times are probably pretty low. I can tell that he seems to be going for pretty high reps on stuff, that he's supersetting stuff, and he sure seems pretty out of breath and sweating the whole time. But as far as getting sufficiently close to failure on each exercise, using a good technique and so forth, I can't say I'm really seeing any of that. And the session design's pretty poor as well. Uh, I don't think this personal trainer is particularly good. So I'm gonna give The Rock again like a, a four and his personal trainer also like a four. I think they're kind of on similar levels when it comes to designing and executing a good bodybuilding session. But yeah, The Rock is still four more jack than I'll ever be. And that's, uh, it is what it is, you know, just crying myself to sleep every night. Also, The Rock looks oddly like Geo dude. Not in a mean way, just think about that next time. Anyways, all love for The Rock, Dwayne Johnson, his personal trainer. If you liked the video, consider liking, commenting, subscribing. If you want to see me react to anyone else, leave a comment down below letting me know who you want me to react to. If you need coaching, if you want me to take care of your training and nutrition, check out my coaching services. Thank you for your time. Have a great day and I will see you next time. Peace.